Alright. Anyway, before I was just rudely interrupted by this stupid thing. Alright. So, when you pull a quark apart, it'll form a new pair. Alright? That energy you put into it is going to create another one. Alright? Imagine that you pulling them apart is like a supernova. Okay? When you pull it apart, that energy is going to create more. Alright? Quarks are self-born. This means that basically the quarks literally did come into existence and create the Big Bang. All right? Now, the nuclear energy literally existed as zero-point energy, but entropy or zero, or technically zero degrees cannot be reached. More or less, more or less, there's always movement. All right? It gets to the point where there's minimal, out, minimal energy output and a singularity will form. All right? Okay, so singularity relative to space, all right? Now, they say it's a dot. They say, oh, the singularity was really tiny. Of course, relative to infinite space, of course it's going to be a dot, all right? So, the singularity is tiny compared to infinite space, of course. So, that indicates that, yes, space did exist even then, but they're trying to say it didn't. They're contradicting themselves, all right? When it comes to Planck times, obviously, Planck times are only because there is infinite space, okay? So, whenever you compare something on an infinite scale to space, it's only going to last a split second, all right? And even though it lasted millions of years, a million years is nothing compared to infinity. So it's going to be Planck times. So technically, with them describing Planck's and all of that, it's pointless. It's pointless to sit there and put Planck time and all that with it. Because literally, all they're doing is indicating, hey, space existed, you know? And we're calculating seconds compared to infinity, and that's what a point time is, all right? So it's almost pointless, all right? This would be a galaxy relative to the size of the singularity, all right? Technically, it would be huge. But compared to infinite space, it would be tiny. See what I'm saying? Now, here's another misconception that we need to uh, put, into, put into space. Okay, we know our universe is finite, all right? Our universe itself has a finite amount of matter. But the universe itself has infinite, or space itself has infinite matter. Well, how is that? You just said it was finite, and then you said it was infinite. Hmm, all right. This is where the multiverse theory does come into play. Because if these are singularity, each one of these is finite. But you're going to have an infinite amount of these. So that means that each universe itself, or singularity, is finite. But there's an infinite amount of universes inside infinite space. So there's finite matter but there's infinite space. Space and a universe are two different things. Space is just space. It's static and unchanging. It's space. It remains space. It does not change from space to any other space. It's just space. It cannot change. It's static, infinite space. That's the flat plane of existence, but it has depth. That's why you have to consider all these facts, because space, it, everything is simple. It's simple, don't get me wrong, but it has a little more complications to it than we think. It's a little more in depth than we think. Deep space. All right. There are more universes, infinite amount of universes. Literally, there are infinite universes in this infinite space, but each one of these universes is finite. That means that a universe has finite energy, but space itself has infinite energy. Okay? Overall, there is infinite energy and matter in the whole space. Okay? Like I was saying, space and a universe are two different things. A universe is space and matter relative to each other, which creates time. So it's space, time, and matter. That's what a universe is. Space itself is a void. Okay, it's chronos. So these, these right here will actually put a lot of our science into perspective. It's not that our data is wrong. It's our perspective that's wrong. And we're not thinking when it comes to terms of space. We're thinking, oh, it's just, it's just space. And then it was formed with the Big Bang. Okay, you can't create space. Okay, you can't. You can remove something to create space. You can't add something to create space. That's the exact opposite of what the Big Bang's saying. Okay, so logically and scientifically, literally, we can prove that space is infinite, that the Big Bang Theory has complete holes in it, and the first law of thermodynamics states that this energy is infinite. Therefore, this energy and this space and all of this literally is God. This infinite, fathomless ex fathomless existence literally is what God would be. The quantum nature of the universe. Okay? So this puts it into perspective. This is the true chronology of the Big Bang. 
See, the chronology would be self-born particles, quantum, nuclear, and electric energy that exist, quantum and electric fluxes, forever, okay? The nuclear energy gave birth to the electric energy, all right? So these quantum energies literally exist before the Big Bang. All right, darkened in a little bit. Okay, so this nuclear energy becomes the singularity. The singularity explodes, becomes stars and sparks, which become hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Or, well, the hydrogen, helium, and lithium basically explodes outward and becomes the sparks and all of the matter that we exists so this would be the true chronology of the big bang this is the problem we're having with all of our physics okay this is why all these paradoxes keep popping up because we're overthinking things we're trying to make the coolest sounding theories sound cool but just because it sounds cool does not mean it's true the simplest explanation is the right one because space is literally it's simple. Everything that happens in space, all these quantum physics and stuff, it's simple. It's very simple. It's not as hard as we're making it out to be. You know, everything happens again and again on different fundamental scales in the universe. Okay, in space. there's The same thing happens over and over, but it just happens on different scales. Now, I'm just throwing this in here when it comes to singularity. Okay, now, you have... Both energies, the male and female energy, this would be the first cell, okay? The singularity is literally like the first cell in the universe, all right? Or, or at least the first cell that we know of in our universe, the singularity was, all right? And panspermia is not too far off because you got this male energy and you got this female energy. This is just, star. this right here is just a, basically an electronic star, okay? Pure omega. This is all the protons and neutrons, the nuclear energy, okay? And when these come together, you're going to have a singularity. Nuclear and electric energy. This is the power of a star, okay? We are nuclear and electric energy. We are literally biological living stars, okay? We are stars. We are all stars. Just to give an example, biostar, okay? People, we got the X and the Y. Bionuclear from our father, the Y. Bioelectric from our mother, the mitochondria. That's the X, okay? This gives a whole new light to the words sons of God. 